Hello YouTube modelers, welcome back to my channel. I want to thank all my viewers and subscribers for tuning in. If you're watching this video, the day I released it on the 25th, Merry Christmas, have a great holiday. Um, this is going to be a kit revisit of a past build, but before that, I have one last holiday card that I received. Very nice collection of various birds. Something I don't get to see much in New York City. Occasionally I might see a red cardinal or something that resembles this blue bird, but for the most part it's just pigeons. And then to add to the realism or the facts of life, occasionally in the city you might see a falcon or a hawk that preys on the pigeons or as we New Yorkers like to call it, rats with wings. So obviously a hawk in New York City has no other predator, so it just feces on the pigeons, which is easy prey for them. But other than that, I don't get to really see much of these exotic birds, so really nice card. Thanks for the Christmas card. Now for the kit revisit, I have the M4 Sherman by Tamiya. It is a 135 scale and fully motorized. So let's take a look at the kit. This kit is basically a very simple kit. I did not mount the top on to the bottom tracks uh, because they're actually hard to detach. So what I did beforehand was slides right out and then there's a tab in the back for this back hook to lock onto which is actually a pain I always feel like I'm going to break it so same thing happened with this motorized kit that plastic pinion gear I had to replace it but other than that motor is still good gearbox is still good I think um the motorized kits they make now, they have a more sophisticated, better gear box than the one you see here. But it does take two C-size batteries. And it just has a simple on-off button. So it will either go, go forward or stop. Or if you reverse the polarity of the batteries, you can actually make go... You can see it go in reverse. But right now, it's going to go forward, so let me pause the video and mount the top. Alright, so I fit the upper hull onto the body by sliding the front into the slide and the rear hook is on the tab. So let's see if I could do this one-handed, which is actually going to be hard. So let's turn it on. motor is a little bit noisy so let me uh, put some obstacles in front of it okay so I have an obstacle here let's turn it on and hopefully everything will cooperate Okay, so the gearbox is a little bit noisy. Let me uh, take the batteries out. All right, so I removed the batteries. That's what the inside looks like. The inside is also molded in the original plastic color of olive green, which I didn't like. So I sprayed the outside with testers, probably like a medium or dark green. So let's stick everything back together. Only thing about this kit that I didn't like was I wish that it was a tighter fit the way this gun mounted onto the turret because as you can see it keeps dropping down. Um, but for the most part it's an easy build. There's not much on the outside. A lot of these things, um, this locking gun barrel I believe was a separate piece but they could have made it 
pivot over here so it can actually work because on some other tanks I built this piece actually is a functional gun barrel lock that you can actually lock the barrel during transit um, but these are all separate pieces the spare tracks the tools I forgot whether they were separate or molded onto the body but if you do a good job of painting it it looks like separate pieces comes with a figure it's actually a full torso figure which I think I scotch taped its feet to the platform the nice Madus or M50 and of course the hatches operate turrets turn and of course this is the later variant of the M4 called the E8 or EZ8 because it has the later improved suspension which is the H VSS or the horizontal volute suspension system if you look at the cylinder it's horizontally mounted because inside is the volute spring mounted horizontally which provides a softer easier ride hence the nickname EZ8 because of the soft ride and because of the E8 designation. Most of the World War II tanks were vertical volute suspension systems so if you look at it it has a vertical shield or vertical spring. So these are the later tanks. I think they might have used them during the very last days of World War II but definitely during the Korean War. Um, it also has an upgunned 76 millimeter gun and of course it's got the wider tracks which is always good because you spread the weight of the tank over a wider surface area. Um, although it doesn't have the skirt it does have the return rollers on top and the drive sprocket has very pronounced teeth so there's no way that track is jumping out so that's why when you turn on the motor it stays you won't throw a track but for the most part simple build just spray it green no complicated camo I think I might have painted the gun a little too light in the green department but decent detail spotlights the stretch sprue for the antenna just very simple detail you know you got the machine gun the gun the light um, shields, although this is a separate piece, like I said, is non-functional. The rear tail lights, the vents. So okay, not overly detailed. It's got the towing hooks, or what's the word I'm looking for? Is it the pincer hitch? So things like that. So. Just a simple build because you just spray paint it green. And that's basically it. I will have picks at the end. Um, this is a good example of a later variant, but of course, I to me, the latest variant I think is the Israeli M51 where they upgun this. If you guys ever see the M51, it looks like a Sherman on steroids because it's got the enlarged turret and it carries the big 105 gun, which protrudes out pretty long. Tracks may be a little bit wider and it's got, of course, the Cummins diesel in it, but it does have that big 105 gun. So if you guys are looking for the Super Sherman, the Super variant, try to build the Israeli M51. That looks like a Sherman on steroids. But this is a good build. So hopefully you guys like it. I think you can still get this Sherman, but obviously without the motor. So I'll have picks at the end. And everyone enjoy your holiday. Forgot to show you guys the instruction manual, which I want to show you. So here is the assembly for the motor. Everything's written in English, so 
no problem with trying to read the Japanese. The infamous way of attract of attaching the tracks is to use a heated screwdriver and melting the stud to form a little mushroom head to seal it. Here are the Korean War with the tiger shark or the teeth to make it look more intimidating. The full size torso. And of course, you can do it with the Japanese decals. And of course, the other kits that were available at that time, which I think are still available now. I like how they list it. And a little bit of the history with some actual photos. Unfortunately, this model does not have a functioning gun barrel lock. Okay, so here are the pics.